Good morning and welcome to our latest and our freshest series of our Student Hub Live. Today we have a special one from the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences and you need to put your tongue twister in to say that. My name is Isabella Henman and I'm your host today and we have got, as I'm sure you've already seen, we have got Damon, we've got Tracy and we've got Joe helping out in the chat. We've got a number of different guests with me today who I will be coming to along the way. Just so you know, the system we're using today might be slightly different if you've been at any of our Freshers events last week, because we're on a slightly different platform. So it isn't a case that when you're going through the chat that you've got the pin button, but if you scroll up, then you can have a look at chat that's not live, as it were, so ones that have already gone through. And then you'll see that there's a message that says there's new messages underneath. And you'll also see that we've got widgets. You might be used to seeing them underneath the video. You should see to the right hand side of the tab with the chat icon on it, it will say session one. So session one is our opening widgets and you can go into there and answer the questions. I'll try and flag along the way when we've got ones. There are some opening ones at the moment and then you come back into the chat. And I mentioned the chat. So Damon, you are our special chat hostmeister today. What kind of things have we been talking about so far? Morning. Um, morning. Yeah, morning to everyone. Um, yeah, everyone's leaping in. Um, basically telling us where they're from and what they're studying. There's a really good spread, really good spread of, of people uh, this time. So there's people studying classical studies, some people just starting for at level one, A112, A113. Um, some people looking to do the MAs. We've got people from Nottingham, Glasgow, the New Forest. Um, so yeah, if people want to pitch in, Tell us, um, tell us what they're studying, tell us um, where they're from and what they're looking forward to. That'd be great. That's fantastic. Thank you, Damon. So hopefully you're getting used to the system. It's like being part of a new university, isn't it? New university, new system. We're all getting used to the new one today. So I said I've got some special guests with me to begin with. And I've got Rachel and I've got Matt and I've got Richard who represent the three schools of the ye, the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Rachel, I'm going to come to you first with the tongue twister. What do we mean? What are we talking about when we say the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences FAS? Yeah, morning there. Um, so I think all universities um, tend to group subject areas together um, just to make it easier because um, there's lots of organisation and management processes that need to happen. So having being able to divide your subject areas into um, smaller packages is easier for universities to organise themselves. And so um, the OU has four faculties and the um, Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences is obviously one of those. Um, so the grouping of the subject areas together is in one faculty, um, but those subject areas still exist in um, individual schools within that faculty. So in, in FAS, in, in this faculty, we have um, psychology and counselling, which is the one I belong to. We also have um, social studies and global studies, and that's um, with Matt. And then we also have arts and humanities, which is the one Richard belongs to. Um, so each school within an umbrella of a faculty in an umbrella even bigger of a university. <laughs> and that's how we organize ourselves. So all the students with Thank us you. this morning who are studying as one of those subject areas are part of this faculty. Fantastic. Thank you, Rachel. I'm so glad you had to explain that and not me, because I think I would have probably messed that up spectacularly. So that's really helpful to know. I think we like organisation. It's almost like having a filing cabinet in the university, isn't it? Which one do you go in? But yes. just so everybody knows, you're not part of a filing cabinet. I'm not saying we're putting you in a filing <laughs> cabinet, but it just helps us. And, and don't worry about thinking, oh, I don't know which part I'm in. You don't have to worry. You're thinking you're studying the module you're studying. And that's it. Yep. So, in fact, moving on to that, Rachel, that we've got lots of brand new students at the moment, haven't we? So can you give us an example of some of the kinds of topics, some of the kinds of modules that we might be having students starting out with at the moment? Yeah, so depending on your qualification, you could be studying a whole range of um, different subject areas, a whole range of different modules. Um, and in fact, um, Damon mentioned a couple when he was introducing himself before. Um, so it really depends on the qualification you're studying. Um, some of them are very general at the start. Some of them are more narrow. It just, as I said, depends on the qualification. If you're an undergraduate student and you're starting at level one, if you're studying a qualification based in our 
the humanities, you might be studying A111 and that covers a lot of different disciplines um, and you sort of start broad and you narrow up as you travel through your qualification um, but you could be doing a bit of history in there, a bit of philosophy, a bit of um, English. Um, if you're studying other qualifications, you might study something like DD102 or DD105, so thinking more criminology or um, social sciences in general, introducing the social sciences, so a bit of economics, a um, bit of sociology. Um, and then if you're studying one of our psychology qualifications, um, we have our level one module D100, which um, might be familiar to some of the people joining us today. Um, and that would be a second level one. But if you're a student who's studying um, at full time intensity this year, then you might be combining that with another level one entry module. Um, so you, a whole range of modules that you could be, I mean, I've just taken a very small sample there um, but there are a large number and it all depends on your qualification journey. Absolutely because everybody's an individual everybody has a study journey and in fact I'm being told some of the really glamorous places we have people joining us from today this is very exciting so we've got Ontario which I think it's presumably Ontario Canada but my geography isn't brilliant sorry and we've got Rome we've got Portugal and we've got Mo Milton Keynes for the glamour of that which is fabulous oh yeah it is Ontario Canada I'm being told so I did get my geography vaguely right we've got 75% of our viewers so far studying at level one which is great so thank you for giving us some ideas of some of those courses you mentioned DD102 there, Rachel. Now, Matt, I know you are the curriculum leader for DD102, so I'm being told. Can you tell us a little bit, for those students that are going to be starting out with that, what can they expect from their study this year? Well, yeah, I mean, it's quite exciting. This year is a really good year to be joining the module. Um, we've remade it this year. So there's a lot of new contemporary debates. Uh, for example, we, we, we look at Internet influencers uh, and their impact on you know how people buy things. We've got new mm -hmm. chapters on the move from the high street to Internet commerce and the kind of power relationships involved in that, you know, do the big the big kind of internet um, companies, I won't name names, but you know who they are. <laughs> Do they make us buy certain things and move us in certain directions? Um, so that's 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 a real debate. Um, we've got a lot of new exciting material on identities. Um, obviously, right. Black Lives Matters has happened over the past few years. So we've got some new material about that um, and, you know, about identity work. So if you're interested in psychology, sociology, criminology, you'll be interested in all of that. Um, and then we've done, we've introduced some new material on criminology itself. Um, we're looking at the way homelessness is framed in society. You know, is it a social issue that needs support or, you know, are homeless people, do they sometimes lead to an increase in disorder? We ask lots of these kind of big questions. Uh, and then we've got some new material also on what is crime? Because, you know, what is crime? That big question is changing all the time. So there's loads in there. There's loads of new material. And hopefully students will be kind of quite interested in some of these big debates. Yeah, it's all yeah. quite and controversial, really but exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Because that part of the study journey sometimes is doing things that, that sometimes make us a little bit uncomfortable sometimes, isn't it? It's about, we think, oh, I'd like to study something nice. But one of the things about social sciences often is it can be a little bit uncomfortable. It can be things that very much impact us because I know that we also have DB125, which is a personal finance module, which some people might be thinking crumbs. That's definitely something I will be looking at. Can you tell us a little bit about that module as well? Yeah, it's a really good module, really useful module for, for, for a lot of students to study. Um, I mean, it introduces you to the financial system, you know, issues of, you know, banking, debt, you know, things like pensions and gilts and bonds that people may not know very much about. Everybody's heard of, obviously, lots of people debt sometimes, mm -hmm. lots of people have bank accounts, but actually, you know, looking at the wider system in more detail. And it also introduces you to, you know, some of the key economic principles that underpins economics as a subject so you get a, a lot of practical knowledge in you know how does the financial system relate to my set of circumstances but it gives you some really good basic economics as well so it sets you up for lots of different qualifications 
Thank you. That that sounds really interesting. So we've talked about a little bit about some of the specifics of some of the modules there. So Rachel introduced us to overall what we look at. You've given us some details. Now, Richard, I know that you are responsible for some of the degree pathways. So sort of broadening out a little bit more. So what kind of degree pathways can our students within FAS, the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, look forward to? What's exciting about those? Uh, hi, Isabella. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I, I'm from the School of Arts and Humanities, so I'll just talk a little bit about uh, about that. We've heard too much about psychology and counselling and social science already. Quite frankly, <laughs> it's time to focus on the best school, which is Arts and Humanities. So, the, as Rachel said, Arts and Humanities, basically you start by studying across a range of modules, uh, uh, sorry, a range of subjects at level one, and then uh, uh, A111 encompasses eight subject areas, and then as you go forward, you specialise, you specialise, uh, uh, until uh, by the end of level one you're studying the subject that you have chosen in your in your degree and the reason for that is arts and humanities subjects they all speak to each other so you are studying history philosophy religious studies art history they're all valuable to you so in arts and humanities we have six subject areas we've got art history creative writing english lit classical studies music and history and they all have Kind of uh, degrees that you can do straight in those subjects in uh, in english we also have english and creative writing as a degree we have english lit and english language as a degree in history we have straight history and history and politics there's a lot of variety and the other thing to mention is we also have what we call broad based degrees so we have a degree in arts and humanities and that's actually our biggest degree in in the school of arts and humanities and that allows students to pick subjects from right across the areas I've just mentioned um, throughout their degree pathway, throughout their study journey. And we also have uh, our third biggest degree in arts and humanities is the open degree. So third biggest in terms of the number of students taking it. Yeah. Um, and what, what the open degree allows you to do is study pretty much any subject from right across the university. So you can go from very specialised to very broad, depending on what you want to get out of it. Fantastic. Thank you, Richard. Obviously, there's a little bit of competition between the schools I'm detecting there. Uh, Richard saying that his school's the best. We're not going to have, we're not going to make anybody vote on which school's the best, but we'll, we'll we should have done that. that <laughs> we, could, we could have a widget saying which school's the best. Actually, we will have. So we, we're actually going to have a ticker question. What I means about that? So the question that we're going to throw out to everybody listening is, what are you looking forward to about your study this year? It may be learning about some of these things that we were talking about. It may be um, something entirely different. So I'll come to Damon in a little while when we've got some answers about that one. But it's quite interesting then, Richard and uh, Matt and Rachel. So you've been talking about we can very much specialise within Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences and we can also be broad. I'm into the open degree. I, I tutor on one of the, well, a couple of the modules on the open degree. And I always think that's a very interesting one for some of our students who are new. They may be thinking, well, I don't actually know what I want to study. That sounds really interesting. In fact, all of those sound really interesting and I don't know where to start. Rachel, what would you say, actually, if somebody was like, OK, I've registered with one module. What do I do next? Well, I mean, I think I think that's right. I think a lot of students, um, when they start their degree, they they may not have studied the subject area that they you know, before, like a lot of subject areas that are covered at university aren't covered at school. Um, so so um, if you are on the open degree, do a bit of a pick and mix and see what areas really spark your interest. If you do a module and you're on one qualification, but you then become unsure if it's the right choice for you, um, have a conversation with your student support team. They have educational advisors who can chat to you about your study plans. So, you know, just just have that conversation have it have you know it's not too late to kind of reconsider what other qualifications you might you know be able to study so you know I think all of us um yes of course we all think our subject here is the best we've been working in a long time but we're also really passionate about students learning and about students being on the right pathway for them um, we'd always want to make sure students um can study the subject of their choice um and we would support them in doing that Thank you, Rachel. That was really that was really helpful. We'll we'll come on to some of the other support in one of our later sessions today. But that was useful. I just need to say, Kat is very worried about your guitar, Richard. She said if um, she said if the radiator comes on, she's worried your guitar is going to warp. But you might be pleased to know Simon says humanity is <laughs> the win. So we've got a little bit of competition going on in the chat as well. 
<laughs> so I, I just wanted to come back to you, Matt, now. Um, we, we were talking a little bit about this earlier in terms of we're talking about the personal finance and the, the different subjects. We know we've got students who are, who, uh, many of them will, might be having some challenging circumstances at the moment. What kind of things could you mention about the study in terms of that for our students? Well, I mean, you'll be dealing with this later, but, you know, there there is the Student Hardship Fund, for example. So, I mean, that's something that you'll be talking about. But just going back to basics, when we first design a course, you know, we ensure that, for example, you know, students who may have a visual impairment, they'll be able to use screen readers to access the material. Um, we do a lot of work on making sure that if we use an image, that we uh, provide descriptions of that image. Um, and so what we're looking, we always look to make sure the module is as accessible as possible to different people, because lots of people come to us with different circumstances. Um, so that, that that's a kind of fundamental of what we do, really. So we're constantly thinking about what what circumstances or what positions will students come to the module you know will they need for example print on demand and we can print you know the vle materials off and send them to our students if that's what they need so there's a whole variety of things that we do to make study with the open university as accessible as possible okay and i'd i'd, I'd advise a student if they're in that situation um if they'd like a bit more support just contact the sst the student support team um and and they'll be able to you know to kind of help you yeah Great, thank you. And and Richard, we often hear this phrase called trigger warnings. Trigger warning, trigger warnings. Now I know that you you know a little bit about this, and it comes up in some of the the modules. Could you explain to us what that actually means from an academic perspective? Yeah, sure. So uh, this comes back to what you were saying earlier, Isabella, about sometimes having to, or sometimes studying kind of topics that can be uncomfortable for some people for various reasons, and also to what Matt Matt was saying there about trying to make sure that you know that our, our degrees are as uh, accessible to people in lots of different circumstances as they can be. So trigger warning is uh, just uh, a flagging up before you get to uh, that part of the module that there is something in it that maybe for some people you know, that may cause them some distress. And that is usually because the, the, the kind of issue that the trigger warning refers to re may relate to or be similar to in some way something that they have experienced themselves. So there's been a bit of fuss in newspapers lately about trigger warnings, particularly around English literature, uh, p p political correctness gone mad and all this kind of thing. I don't think that's mm, entirely fair. The, the the purpose of a trigger warning is not to uh, stop students studying topics, it's rather to help them study those topics. So they know in advance that this is coming up and they can be prepared for it. And then we can offer you know, support uh, for individual students to kind of help them study that topic, even though it may flash something from their own histories, their own lives that you know could be difficult for them. So it's enabling people to study difficult topics and uncomfortable topics rather than stopping them from doing so. Great. Thank you. Because we don't want to say to people, no, you can't study this. It's going to make you uncomfortable. But actually, we just need you to be aware that you might need to be thinking a little bit carefully. And I know, Rachel, we have something called the Sensitive Topics. Is that right? The Sensitive Topics Toolkit, which might be helpful in this some other time. Have I got the right terminology there? So there's um, there's various things that are are being prepared really. Um, some resources for for staff um, around teaching sensitive topics and how to kind of manage that um, when you are teaching content that um, could be difficult, could be challenging. Um, people will have different experiences of. And then we're also creating sort of toolkits for students um, who you know inevitably with a lot of the subject areas we've talked about there could be areas um, that are kind of contested you know people have very different and strong viewpoints on mm -hmm. or also sort of sensitive um, topics that they might be studying, you know, that they're studying. So um, so we, we are creating these sort of toolkits, both for sort of staff and students, recognizing that there are some additional challenges around handling this sort of um, difficult material. Um, and I think that's just being responsible, recognizing yeah. that, all of us come to these topics um, from from different places, different backgrounds. But what we share is a passion to learn more about them and to engage with them and to um, actually hear different viewpoints, because actually that helps us in our own understanding and development as well. 
Great. Thank you, Rachel. That's really helpful. I, I had a feeling that I wasn't going to get the right terminology there, but see, I try. We, we're not perfect, are we? That's the whole thing we're learning. I, I still know these things. I've been around for I still get them wrong. So I know I've been told that the word cloud is ready. So let's have a look at the word cloud, which was what um, what subject are you studying? Oh, there you go. Oh, are we going to have a bit of competition? I think psychology is a bit bigger there, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Richard's not happy about that. I can see he's putting his thumb down in the background. He's not happy at all. But that's great. Rachel, DD103. Rachel's, Rachel's won the competition. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, DD103, criminology, psychology, A111, arts history. What we got some of the tiny one cultures and and humanities, bear history, creative writing, lots of different ones, and masters. So it's fantastic that we've got masters people here. That's really nice. I remember my first experience with the university was actually when I started as a master's student. We didn't have freshers in those days. And I really feel that like now I'm involved in all that kind of thing. I I so would have liked that. I was just like, oh, right, just get in, get in studying. So we've we've looked at the word cloud. Damon, I'm just going to come to you now. What kind of things have been, people been sharing in the chat pod have we had some excitement have we had more competitions or something different um yeah everyone's getting on getting on really well um they've mostly been telling us what they're what they're studying so there's as as the word cloud shows there's psychology philosophy um international studies classical history uh, classical studies history we've got a couple of people on the access courses as well um, so Fantastic. presumably moving forward and thinking ahead and, and planning. Um, there's been a bit of a chat about the um, sensitive topics. Um, mm -hmm. Petrina um, says that accessibility has been really good over over her last okay. year. Um, and Helen says that trigger warnings are, are certainly helpful for her. Um, there's um, some discussion about the, the uh, where there's an issue studying sensitive topics, but people are really pleased that the OU is tackling these subjects um, and and looking forward to to moving through and learning more about it. Um, there is a question. Um, this uh, D Rain is on the open degree, um, and he's wondering how easy it is to change degree um, once you're you're actually studying. Um, so yeah, there's a, a whole range of things going on. OK, I'm, I'm going to actually say I'm not sure who which of you give me a thumbs up, Rachel, Matt and, or Richard, who wants to answer that question? <laughs> Richard, Richard, put his thumb up first. OK, Richard, you go ahead. <laughs> Can you answer for us? Yeah. And don't just say come it, to Arts and Humanities. <laughs> yeah, come to Arts and Humanities. Good answer. No, I mean, it depends how far it depends how far through your study journey you are like how many modules you've studied um so it, you know the more modules you've studied i suppose the 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 fewer options you have of using them against a degree but there's still almost always a, a number of options so i think you it'd be very worth having a conversation with the student support team to see what those options are i imagine there's quite a few that you could still pick from yeah Thank you, Richard. That, yeah, and that's it's really useful to know, isn't it? I think we are an open university. Obviously, we talked about the open degree, but there's still lots of flexibility within a number of different things. And you can swap and change. The worst I think that can happen, and I've seen a few of my students, and I'm, I don't mean worst in a bad way, but you might have to do another module at the level you've done if you want to do something. So, for instance, you might have already done a, your, your 60 credits, your 120 credits, a level one. But if you've done a specialise in something else, you might have to do another module. But if that's what you really want to study, then that's great. We've had some more comments, actually, about things like the sensitive topics, which is really nice. So Helen says, no one knows what anyone else has been through. So sensitivity for others should be a basic mm -hmm. common courtesy. Absolutely. And Simon says he's got no concerns about studying sensitive topics, but he's really pleased that that the OU is so responsible to make sure people are prepared. I think that's a really nice thing to hear and I'm really pleased about that one. So I'm going to be drawing this session to a close shortly but what I wanted each of you to do is give me, and it's probably quite a big challenge, a one sentence summary of what you want students to take away. So Rachel, I'm going to come to you first. What's your one sentence summary, your take home message? enjoy this year you know um learning is for life and you know it's such a great opportunity so enjoy it and get your get your family involved in helping you manage your studies if you if that's something you're dealing with i have two parents who've been mature students so i i i've watched it from both sides um so just but enjoy it enjoy the journey excellent and what about you matt what's your one sentence summary 
Yeah, it's your first year. I think be open to new ways of learning. You know, you'll be learning about new subjects, subjects you might not know about, um, but also to doing things, you know, different ways of being assessed and different ways of understanding the world. It's, you know, just be open to all of that, really. Yeah, have an open mind. Fantastic. Yeah. And I, I probably already know your one sentence summary, Richard, but maybe it's going to be a different one. What's your one sentence summary, Richard? Um, well, there's there's always plenty of help available. So I suppose my one sentence summary is if poo happens, you know, reach out. OK, it wasn't that was the censored version that's... of that. <laughs> no, well, so thank you. I'm glad you did the censored version. That's brilliant. So thank you very much for to Rachel, Matt and Richard for my thing. I'll be coming back with. Eamon, Blohin and Jabulo in a little while. But first of all, we're going to be watching a video which is entitled, I went from prisoner to PhD. So that's the video you'll be watching and then you'll be back with us live shortly.